Welcome to Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. We hear a lot about climate change and the melting of the polar caps. But climate change can have unintended effects, such as the release of ancient microbes from soils, sediments, and frozen that are frozen in a distant past. The Siberian permafrost is amongst the most suitable environments to look for long-term surviving microorganisms because it's got a neutral pH and uh, it has got anaerobic properties. In a recent paper by Legendre, and isola they isolated a large DNA virus from about 30,000 year old uh, carbon dated permafrost. Wow. They, uh, they named it the pathovirus, and it is one of the most ancient eukaryote infecting DNA viruses revived to date. That's right, and it's com it combines the morphology of the known Pandora virus with the gene content more similar to that of the icosahedral viruses. Yes, and the virus is very GC rich, and uh, it's up to uh, 2.8 megabase pairs long. Wow. That's quite big for a virus. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it's like a giant mouse if you think about <laughs> it relatively. They, they used an exterior mate pairs uh, kit for the sequencing and they used the MySeq. So uh, it's a really nice example of a MySeq application. And you know, the story isn't just about finding a virus, but it's more so about assessing its ability to infect its host. What the authors did was as a surrogate for human pathogens, the authors screened for amoeba infecting viruses as an inexpensive and safe way to realistically assess if these viruses, you know, pose a threat. Yeah, you may wonder why did they infect the amoebas? Because, um, you know, couldn't they just do uh, metagenomics to detect the virus? And true, they could. But, the, but metagenomics, as we all know, would only be able to detect the presence of the virus and not really tell us if the virus was actually alive, for that matter. Yeah, that's true. And based on the DNA sequence, they predict that the genome encodes about 2,500 proteins. And um, the interesting part is to validate the, the gen gene predictions, they performed whole transcriptome shotgun sequencing on pathovirus infected cells at virus, various infection times, because you want to make sure that all the genes are being expressed at that moment. And um, there was evidence uh, that they could get transcription for up to 82% of the predicted coding regions. Oh, that's pretty that's good. a pretty good approach to, to characterize a completely new virus family because the expression analysis is actually independent of the gene prediction. Mm -hmm. They first did the gene prediction and then the expression. Exactly. And I mean, release of the microorganisms is just the tip of the iceberg. We need to understand if these viruses and other microorganisms can pose a threat as they're dispersed in an environment with the melting of the polycaps. Speaking of environment, a paper by Konya shows that environment in our homes affects our gut microbiome, especially focusing on the infant gut. Yeah, it, it's surprising because uh, we well know that the majority of micro, uh, microbes in the infant gut, they inherit from their mothers. So, and as they grow up and they're exposed to the environment, they, um, the microbiomes start reflecting the environment. And uh, we've also covered some papers where pets increase the complexity of the microbiome uh, in the environment. So in that regard, babies are a bit like pets. <laughs> An interesting finding um, by Konya was that although microbes in the infant gut are anaerobic, meaning that they don't really need oxygen to survive, they could still survive in the air, um, you know, which is filled with oxygen, of course, and be transmitted to other individuals. Their results also indicate that infant and house dust each in turn serve as reservoirs and receptors of what they call the old friend microbes, which are harmless microbes present throughout mammalian evolution that are thought to influence the immune regulation. Yes, we share a, a very much more intimate relationship with our environment than we realize. And it's really interesting to see how sequencing can help us understand our environment and how it can protect or harm us. Exactly. You are a little bit more than what you eat. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're out of time today, but thanks for tuning into our show. Please do feel free to reach out to us with any questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns. As always, we love hearing from you. Take care and have a great day. Bye. Bye.